Okay, as you can see uh, with the body off, uh, this is the 55. This is the uh, pancake uh, motor. And all we need to do now is uh, take the little resistor off. Um, it, just, it, it, it should just pull off. Um, I have loosened this one a bit, so take that off. It's uh, not good for DCC at all. And then all we need to do is uh, unsolder the two terminals now. That one there and that one, which uh, go direct to the track. Left hand side, this side, and that goes to the uh, right hand side on that side. Okay. What you need to do really is just to get your gun and just slightly put it on the solder and it should come straight off like so. And the same with the side but this one's just slightly tricky and off. Five, excellent chip. It's approximately about twelve pounds, slightly cheaper, slightly more. Um, there is some DCC chips on the market which retail about twenty-five pounds. This, in my opinion, is equivalent to most of them. I know there are some better chips out there, but this is a fantastic uh, DCC chip, which I think will go up in value in the future. It's a four-function um, eight-pin. Uh, it's 1.2 amps, 2 amps maximum power, which is pretty good for the older models, which do drain a bit of power, um, which you do need a chip like this. I've tried installing the R8249, the R8249 uh, Hornby chip. Um, it's just not powered any of my lemurs or my old Hornby, so that's why I've gone to the Gauge Master. Um, okay. Um, the front uh, bogey, uh, where the clip is, as you can see, um, that's going to be connected to the red wire on the uh, DCC chip. And the uh, trailing bogey on the pickup, which is the black cable, uh, I, put a, I put an extension on here, which gives me plenty of room to put the DCC chip there. That The black one's going to be connected to the red cable on the uh, DCC chip. Again, both of these cables, the um, black one there, which are going to go to the uh, red, and the black one at the rear, where the motor is, which again going to go to the black on the chip, um, they are the pickups, they are the pickups. The, the last two you need to connect, doesn't matter which way you do it, it's the way I do it, is um, on the right hand side where your orange cable to DCC chip is going to go, on the left hand side, is going to be the grey, the grey cable TDCC chip. Okay, let's get soldering. Okay, I've taken the uh, the chip out of the uh, packaging. This is the cable. Okay, it's master, master excellent. Uh, the chips, uh, the chips are separate there, which uh, just plug in. Do the right way around, which plug into that socket. We're going to do a start off by. Um, just snipping the uh, the pin socket. I'm going to leave a little bit of a uh, little cable in case you want to reuse these again. So I'm going to snip the plug off. There we go. And all you need to know is uh, the four cables we're going to use, which are the grey, black, red, and yet yeah, orange. I'm going to just uh, put extensions on three of those cables. Sorry, two of the cables I've already done one. Um, so then I'm ready and we'll carry on. Okay, look, we're left with the connector now. Um, the chip fits in there, just that socket there. I've cut the 8 pin socket off um, and trimmed all these cables off. This, um, these cables here are for directional light and other functions. Okay, the four cables we're using are the orange, the grey, the black, and the red. The red cable and the black cable go to the pickups. I've already soldered one the red cable, 
which goes to the chip and that goes to the uh, the clip the brass clip as you can see the brass clip which is at the front bogey pickup that's been soldered the second one I need to solder now is the black cable to the chip which is going to go to the extension I made which is on the uh, rear bogey pickup rear bogey pickup where the motor is and that just needs to be soldered there so let's solder that so I'm not uh, the fantastic solder but uh, I need to do is get a good connection it should be covered over then with the tape there's plenty of flux so we can get the solder uh, following ok beautiful ok see that's connected there, that's the black so that's both pickups connected now what we need to do now is uh, connect the uh, orange and the grey orange and the grey uh, wires so the orange goes to the right hand side and the grey goes to the left hand side what we need to do now with these though is just put two um, extensions one there and one on that one Ok, my two extensions cut, um, I'm now going to give you a tip and my tip is you need to tin, tin, tin all your, your cables, both connections, obviously use flux, I use the Gage Master Flux too for white metal, the flux helps, it to, helps the uh, solder to flow better, by tinning the cables you can virtually get an instant to bond straight away. So what I'm going to do is uh, dip the first cable in. Straightforward to just turn. Just, just put a little bit of solder on. That's that side. Okay. Again a little bit more on that side. Side. That's, ten. That's one little extension. Same with the other extension. Doesn't matter what colour you use as long as you do the colour code from the main decoder wise. Just used uh, the cable I have bought for other accessories uh, for the model railway. I've got the hand. Okay. All I need to do is these two extensions is just connect them to the orange and grey wire. Okay, I put the extensions on the the grey and the uh, orange. As you can see, the orange cable, which is blue at the end now, I'm going to solder to the right hand side of the motor. Okay, that's the orange cable which is connected. Like I say, it's got the blue extension. Now we're going to do the grey which is on the left hand side, which has got a white extension. The grey cable has got the white extension. It's going to be soldered to the right hand side. Believe me, if I can solder, anybody can. Just follow the, uh, just use flux. Be very steady. Make sure all your clean, your surfaces are clean. 
and that's, that's obviously instant as you can see. Now all the cables now are connected. All we need to do now is uh, put a bit of tape neatly round uh, all the bare joints and uh, plug the decoder in and uh, it's a test. Should put it all back together now. Okay, as you can see, it's all been uh, otherwise been uh, tidied up now. Cable's been neatly uh, put out of the way. Just got to be careful; you can even up through for the bogey for turning. There's plenty, plenty of room there. Um, I fitted, I fitted the uh, socket now into the decoder. I've just stuck that on with insta insulation tape. Um, the metal weight I've actually put to insulation tape on that. Don't risk uh, any electrical contacts touching that. Okay, we'll go uh, test her on uh, Axton Rail. Okay, the loco is now on uh, Axton Rail, and fingers crossed it's going to work. Um, the it's uh, selected to number three, which is default for any new uh, decoder, and here goes. Brilliant. There we go. These are working fine. Now uh, let's get the body on and uh, see how it goes. Okay, and there we have it. The King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry. Number 55Z02. This model, even though it's old-ish, is absolutely pristine condition. It's been kept like this, so uh, we are looked after. Now new new lease of life on Axton Rail. Okay, another loco, uh, Lima loco. I put a DCC chip in again. A, it was a Gage Master. Was this beautiful, pristine again, class twenty, which is limited edition. It's twenty uh, one one two, the blue BR. Um, this is an absolute lovely drive, um, which I will show you now. Very quiet, good solid runner. Which I'm sure you're quite a good grey is a lovely train. <laughs> 